everyone, it's Lisa here. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to draw a super cute little bear in Procreate using my nitty gritty brush box. Okay, so I'm gonna start by creating a new document. It's 3,900 pixels by 4,950. And the next thing you want to do is import the free uh, palette that comes with the collection called Nitty Gritty Bear. And on a new layer, we're going to start sketching out our bear. So I'm just going to use the darker brown color. Coming to the light sketcher. And we're just going to start by drawing a very simple shape. It kind of looks like a tall mound like a little mountain in fact I think it's a little too skinny so we're gonna go a little bit wider over here I want bear to be quite chunky so I'm just gonna delete that and just feeling out the shape at this stage not being too particular about, um, you know, the line work. And we're just going to add some ears, which are funny little sort of teardrop shape. And the next thing I want to do is add a big chunky scarf, but I just want to plot out where I want his face. So my nose is probably going to sit something like that. That would be snout area. Maybe his little eyes. Okay, so Bear's got a big chunky scarf. And the curve kind of follows his, his body. And I'm just being really rough at this stage. Just feeling out my shapes. And he's got a kind of like an overlapping bit that comes down. I've just taken the line from the top diagonally, brought it down again, and that kind of gives you that impression of the scarf falling over the top and the other one coming down like so so your scarf is obviously going to be wider than the body so just bear that in mind and he's got a big nose and just drawn a cute little mouth okay so eye placement something like that with some eyebrows and then his little friend who's standing on his head just drawing a circle and the circle gets a little sort of narrower at that point where his beak's gonna go and that's his tail, his little leggies, and his beak, and maybe he's singing a little song. Okay, so our foundation work is done. So now we're going to start adding uh, the additional line work that I like to add. So I like a really grungy look. I'm just going to rename this so I know exactly what it is. Okay, so on a new layer, I'm going to use the, the Grimy Shy pencil to begin with. So as mentioned, I like a really grimy 
sort of effect to my work. So this pencil is pressure sensitive in terms of the amount of ink that comes out. So I'm, again, I'm just feeling the edges. Very light pressure on my Apple Pencil. So this isn't really for definition as such, it's just more for creating a sort of grungy effect. The definition we're going to add in a minute. So you, your uh, drawing technique your, or your style, should I say, you know, may not suit this, so feel free to skip the step. But for me, this is, I quite like the step, it's kind of fun. <laughs> okay, coming to my hard pencil. So this brush is quite nice for defining lines. So I'm going to eventually be setting this layer to a color burn. And then there'll probably be another layer of line work, but we'll see. So again, you'll see I am really rough. And I'm not worried about going over the same area too many times. In fact, I quite like that look. So please do experiment uh, with how much texture you want in your piece. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to adding some color. So again, on a new layer, but I want it right underneath. So I'm just going to bring that underneath everything. I'm going to turn this guy to color burn in the meantime. Okay, so on our new layer, I'm going to choose that sort of, I don't know, brownie color. <laughs> They're all brownie colors. Um, okay, so I'm going to use the uh, canvas grunge. So this is going to be my base color and you'll notice I'm going to be really loose because I really like that that's going on there and this brush creates some lovely unexpected or, or you know sort of unpredict not really predictable every time which is exactly what I want. And you'll notice where I've now set that layer to color burn and it's picking up the, the color underneath, which is exactly what I want. Again, experiment with the pressure of your Apple Pencil with this uh, brush. You know, the lighter pressure gives you interesting results and the harder you go, you have more ink. So I'm going really rough and grimy. Oops. Okay, so we're ready to add the top layer. So this will be the final color of bear. And the reason why I wanted the underneath color to be dark, because that works really well when you're using a lighter color at the top. And I'm going to be using the brush called Cosmos. And you'll see as we paint, just want to make sure I'm on the new layer, yeah. As we paint, it's bringing, it's kind of showing through the underneath color 
which really adds some interesting results. So again with this brush it's a little bit different to the other one in terms of the pressure. So the more pressure you add and the more you go over the same area, the more ink you take away. So you decide how much pressure you want to, well, sorry, to texture you want to add to uh, this layer. But I really like how it picks up the underneath color. And when you're creating simple characters like we are, you know, the texture is going to do a lot of work for you in terms of adding that sort of quirky, cute effect. Again, I'm just covering the whole area. Okay, so if we are finding that that's too much texture, what you could, there are a few things you can do. The one is to add a stamp, which I'm going to do. I'm going to use the painted background stamp and just going to stamp once. And then, so that's added some nice sort of organic texture. And then using my smeary grain brush, I'm just going to full areas here and there. So the nice thing about this the smeary grain brush it works really well if the more strokes you uh, create on your canvas the more interesting um, you know texture it has. So you decide how much you want to add. So I'm still leaving some nice texture here and there. Okay so I think our bare layer is done. So I just want to add that little snout area onto a new layer. I'm going to use the next sort of uh, kind of creamy brown color and I'm using Cosmos because again I want to just show some of the background texture through. And on a new layer, we're going to add some cheeks using our pink. Coming down to one of the stamps, I'm going to use the painted circle. And you might have to adjust the size depending on how big you want his cheeks. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cute. Okay, so I'm going to add some uh, more defining lines and add his snout. So we're going to come back to this color and at this stage you can use any brush, um, you know, any filler brush. I'm going to go with a smeary grain because I actually want some of that streaky line work. And you'll notice how it's picking up that uh, color burn layer that we have. It's exactly what we want. Okay, I think bears coming together. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the scarf. Again, new layer. And I'm going to start by using the lighter color. And I think what I'm going to do is use the dirty grain brush. Just want to see if that's the effect I want. Yeah. Okay, so I'm setting kind of a base color like we did with bear. And this is where I really encourage you to experiment by using different weird and wonderful base colors because you can get some really interesting results. So you'll notice in this case we're going with a bright base color. And my final scarf color is going to be a bit darker than this orange. But what it's going to do is just pick up some of this bright orange on our final layer. Again we're being quite loose. Absolutely have permission to go over the lines. <laughs> okay 
and using the darker orange I'm going to use the smeary grain and you'll see it's picking up this base color here and there which is quite nice and it just gives that extra depth in your uh, color and again you can decide how much texture you want to leave and if you want even more you could use the cosmos brush for example which shows a lot more texture Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add a little pattern on his scarf. So on a new layer above the scarf, I'm going to turn that to a clipping mask and choose this bright color that we used originally. And I'm going to use the rectangles. I just want to see the scale, if it's big enough or small enough. Okay, so I'm going to just change the scale of that. So I'm going to come over to my brush, tap once, come over to grain, and then just bring that scale down just a dash, tap done, let's see, mm, maybe a dash more. So please do experiment with the, the scale of the patterns and definitely adjust them to you know suit your project. That's better. Okay, I think the next thing I'm going to focus on now is our little bird. Again, on a new layer. If you realize that you're starting to run out of layers, you can either flatten areas that you're happy with, um, or you can scale your canvas down. Although I would recommend to rather flatten it than scale your canvas down in case you actually want to sell the artwork at a later stage. Okay, so we're going to go with a dark blue and use the smeary grain again and I'm just doing the the little tail using a lighter blue I'm just gonna add some uh, what do you call it little wings maybe even lighter and then his little beak and his little leggies you can decide how much detail you want to give your little birdie but I think I'm pretty happy with him okay so now I'm going to move on to adding um, a background color so this is quite an important step if you want to maintain that sort of grungy painterly look throughout your entire piece so the first thing we're going to do is again form a base color so right at the bottom of everything I'm going to choose my base color which is the darker blue and just drag and drop and then above that layer using the lighter blue I'm just going to start painting around my little bear So I'm using the smeary brush at this stage, uh, smeary grain, sorry, um, because I actually want to retain, um, you know, neater edges. And later on, we're going to use the background brushes just to finish it off. 
So you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm leaving a little bit of a gap between the edge of the bear. So you're almost going with a darker color on the edge. I think that adds more of an authentic sort of painted look. And you'll notice I am doing a lot of brush strokes because this brush has great results with uh, you know many brush strokes. So we could just do that, but then it doesn't have that yummy texture. So that is why I'm using quite a lot of strokes as I work. And again, it's just around the areas of our character. And I'm being quite loose. So I'm mimicking, if I was doing this on uh, paper or canvas with paint, I would basically follow the same process. So now that we have our line work well, or should I say the edge is done, we can use the larger brushes. So I'm going to use the vintage grain to start off with and see, oops, see what that looks like. Again, you can decide how much of the underneath color you want to keep, you know, show through. So you might even want to use oops, the scribbly brush here and there. And if you'd like to add even more variation, oops, what I like to do is just adjust the color slightly as I paint. variation gives it you know handcrafted look okay so now I'm gonna start working I'm gonna go back to my bear and just start working on the edges to give it a little bit more quirkiness so on the same color burn layer that we had originally I'm coming over to that brown color and I'm going to choose my shy canvas and just here and there I'm gonna add some grabbiness if that makes sense <laughs> Again, you can obviously decide how much you want. 
you might prefer less, you might prefer more. And then on a new layer, I'm going to start applying some more line work. So I'm using my hard pencil. And I'm just going to set that to multiply. In fact, I might use a different color. Let's go with a lighter one, see what, what that looks like. And it is on multiply, yeah. Okay. So with this layer, I'm just going to add some, just some quirky details. And add some more grubby sort of line work. And then I'm going to do the same on the color burn layer. And this just adds more richness. Again, you might want to stop and, you know, at this stage and not add that sort of extra line work. But I always like very grungy work. <laughs> and I'm going to swap to my grimy pencil. So there's no, obviously there's no hard and fast rule here. It just depends on your taste. Okay, so a little bit more detail on the whiteness of the bear. I'm going to add kind of, oops, wrong color, of course. Same color as bear with my grimy pencil. Just adding some sort of line work, um, not line work, sort of fur here and there. Maybe some on his ears. And then finally, we're going to do just a dash of shadow work. So above, just below the line work layer, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to use this brownie color. Wish I had a name for all these colors. <laughs> and then using the grungy, uh, the canvas grunge, I'm actually just going to set that to multiply, probably bring it down to about, yeah, about 40. And just with a light pressure of my pencil. Again, if the light source is coming this way, we're going to have shadow this side. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's just to give it a, a bit of definition. Yeah. 
and you can decide again you can decide how much you want to add of course oops I'm just gonna go a dash darker coming over to my smeary grain so these are just the areas that are going to have more harder edges or harder shadow should I say and I think we're done with that so the final thing I want to do is just add a little bit more um, texture on top and again you can decide how much you want to add so I'm going to use the the white color I'm going to set that to screen and choosing one of our stamps I'm going to go with the foam grit and make it really large and I'm just going to stamp once or twice and then bring that down a bit probably something like that and then another layer this time I'm actually going to use color burn or oh sorry linear burn and using the same dark blue that we used originally for the background I'm going to use one of the texture brushes I'll go with faint strokes and see where that takes us so very lightly here and there I'm just adding some grunginess and then using the dust brush and I'm coming sort of to the edges and we're going to adjust that in a minute So it's all about how much you want to add and I think for me that's it so I'm just going to bring that down a dash so it blends better and then finally I'm going to just finish off those music notes coming back to my hard pencil think that's it hope the tutorial helped you with some tips and techniques on how to add texture to your cute characters in procreate thanks for watching